Podcast. You're listening to the Missartastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. And art resources for art education at MsArtastic.com. Find the link in the description or go to MsArtastic.com now. Creative ways to teach the elements of art to kids. So here we go. So teaching the elements of art to kids as is an essential part of their education. It helps them develop uh, creativity, critical thinking skills, and self-expression. Uh, however, simply lecturing about the elements of art can be pretty dry and un- unengaging for young learners. So it is crucial to incorporate fun and creative activities into the teaching process. In this episode, we're going to be exploring 10 fun and creative ways to teach the elements of art to kids from drawing exercises to sculpture projects uh, and beyond. Whether you're an art teacher, homeschooling parent, or simply looking for ways to enrich your child's learning, these activities will engage and inspire young artists while teaching them the fundamentals of art. So here we go. The importance of teaching the elements of art to kids. So teaching the elements of art to kids is incredibly important as it helps them develop fundamental skills and understanding related to visual uh, art. Um, The elements of art include line, shape, color, texture, form, space, and value. And when children learn about these elements, they develop critical thinking and problem-solving skills. They learn to look at and analyze works of art as well as they create their own art with intention and purpose. Furthermore, our education promotes creativity, self-expression, and communication, which are essential skills for success in both personal and professional lives. In addition, teaching the elements of art uh, can foster cultural understanding and appreciation as students can learn about learn about art from different times, cultural cultures, and perspectives. Finally, our education can also have positive effects on other academic subjects, such as math and science, by promoting observation, experimentation, and analytical skills. Overall, teaching the elements of art to kids is crucial for their personal and academic growth and can enrich their lives in numerous ways. So let's dive in on to the benefits of incorporating fun and creative activities. Incorporating fun and creative activities into learning has numerous benefits for kids. Firstly, it increases engagement and motivation, making the learning process more enjoyable and rewarding. When children are having fun while learning, they are more likely to stay in focus, retain information, engage with your lesson, um, and participate actively. Secondly, uh, creative activities can stimulate imagination and encourage divergent thinking, which is essential for problem solving and innovation. When kids are encouraged to think outside the box and come up with original ideas, they develop skills that are applicable, applicable to a wide range of contexts. Thirdly, creative activities can foster social and emotional skills such as teamwork, communication, empathy, and self-confidence. When kids collaborate on creative projects, they learn to communicate their ideas effectively, uh, respect others' perspectives, and appreciate diverse backgrounds and experiences. Finally, creative activities can provide a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment as children see tangible results of their efforts and gain a sense of mastery and pride. Overall, incorporating uh, fun and creative activities into learning can enhance ch- uh, a children's engagement, motivation, creativity, social and emotional skills, and a sense of fulfillment. So what are the elements of art? 
There are traditionally seven elements of art that are considered the building blocks of visual art, and these elements include line, which is the basic element of art that refers to a continuous mark made on a surface, such as a pencil stroke or a brush stroke. Number two is shape, a closed space created by a boundary, such as a square, circle, or triangle. Number three is form, three-dimensional objects that have height, width, and depth as a sculpture or a building. Uh, number four is space, the area around and between and within objects. Uh, space can be positive, so occupied by objects, or negative, which would be the empty space surrounding an object. Number five is texture, so the qual surface quality of an object can be perceived through touch or implied visually. Number six is value, the degree of lightness or darkness of a color, often referred to as shading or tonal value. Number seven is the hue or, sorry, <laughs> skipped over number seven's word, color! Yeah, you're awake now. I know you got distracted, but you're awake now. Color is the hue or saturation and brightness of a visual element uh, created through the use of pigments, light, and digital tools. These elements can be combined and manipulated in countless ways to create a wide range of visual effects and communicate different meanings and emotions. Now, if you've got distracted, come back to me. I know my camera's a little sideways here, yo. A little sideways. We're gonna fix it right now. It's happening. It's. I can see it when I, if I, in my peripherals, that it's a little crooked. Anyway. There we go. Okay, moving on. Anyways, if you got distracted like I just did, please come back to me. Put that cell phone down. Make sure everyone in your house is occupied because right now I'm going to go into 10 fun and creative ways to teach the elements of art to kids. First idea is collaborative drawing. Have students work in pairs or groups to create a drawing that incorporates all the elements of art. Encourage them to experiment with different techniques and materials to create interesting textures and colors. Three is a no two <laughs> is a nature scavenger hunt. Y'all know I love nature so much. So now, if you don't have nature around you, I replace that with urban environment. Also fascinating, right? Fascinating to look at and get inspiration from. The so the sensory in either or is awesome, yo. So take the class on a nature walk or a or urban environment and have them collect items such as leaves or rocks and bring them back into the classroom. Or while you're out, what I used to do is like I used to say, kids, grab something to draw on, something to draw with. Go outside with some clipboards and stuff or uh, whatever, a do a tank, sketchbook. Go outside and find something out there in the urban environment, in the schoolyard, in there's tons of things and textures in the schoolyard, right? You don't have you can zoom in or zoom out on all kinds of different things. Um, and then, yeah, but use those to explore the elements of art, uh, such as shape, color, and texture. Number three, color mixing. Set up a color mixing station with primary colors of paint and let color kids experiment with mixing up secondary colors or even creating their own colors. Then they can make them and name them as though they're like a paint store, right? Um, and then they can just um, really explore and understand colors in a play-based way. Uh, and then have them create a color wheel such as this, but not this crazy. But yeah, anyway, this is a this is a bot color wheel. So, <laughs> but have them create a color wheel to explore the relationship between colors. Next is body tracing. So have kids lie down on a large piece of paper and trace their body, and have them use different materials and techniques uh, to fill in the different elements of art, such as texture and line. Next is found object sculpture. Have kids collect found objects um, from around the classroom or home and use them to create a sculpture that explores the elements of art, such as form and space. Next is blind contour drawing. So have kids draw a still life object without looking at the paper. This exercise helps them focus on the element of art line um, and encourages them to really just loosen up, make mistakes, and have fun and just let the process happen. Next is shadow drawings, number seven. Uh, set up a still life object and have kids draw the object and its shadow. This exercise helps them explore the elements of our value and how light and shadow can create depth and dimension. Number eight, I know you got to sleepy there. Got you, yo. Graffiti art. Have 
kids create a graffiti style artwork that incorporates the elements of art such as color and line. This exercise encourages them to experiment in different materials and techniques and gives them an opportunity to express themselves through art. Next is clay sculpting. So you can provide kids with clay and let them create three-dimensional sculptures that explore uh, the elements of art such as form and texture. Number 10 is digital art. Um, and I highly recommend that you, if you have some extra money and you got access to technology, grab for your class a few different Wacom tablets. The Intuos is amazing, totally recommend it. Love it, it's so, so easy to use and versatile. Uh, but introduce kids to digital art tools such as tablets and drawing software. Um, I think there's like a Google Paint version, there's Krita that's free. Um, but there's endless, endless options in this age of tech. But Wacom tablet, woo! Yeah, that's a cool, cool one. I would definitely check that out. Um, but this exercise allows them to explore the elements in a new way and, and encourages them to think creatively about how technology can be used in art. Next is how artists use the elements of art. So artists use the elements of art as the building blocks for creating their works. These elements including include line and shape, form, texture, space, value, and color. Um, and by understanding them and manipulating those elements, artists can create a, a wide range of visual effects and really just communicate different meanings and emotion. Line is the most basic element of art and refers to a continuous mark made on the surface. Artists can use line to create different shapes and forms, convey movement and meaning or even emotion, or simply create a sense of texture or pattern. For example, a thin, delicate line can convey a sense of fragility or vulnerability, while a bold and heavy line can create a sense of strength or power. Shape refers to a closed space created by the boundary, such as a square, a circle, or a triangle. Artists can use shape to create interesting compositions uh, or emphasize certain parts of their work. For example, a circular shape can really draw the viewer's eyes towards the center of the artwork, while a triangular shape can really create a sense of tension or imbalance. Uh, form refers to a three-dimensional object that, any three-dimensional object that has a height, um, width, depth, such as a sculpture or a building. Artists can use form to create realistic or abstract uh, representations of objects or to create interesting textures or patterns. For example, a sculptor might use form to create the illusion of movement or a sense of weight or mass. Space refers to the area around, between, and within objects. Artists can use space to create a sense of depth or to emphasize certain parts of their work. For example, a painter might use the negative space, uh, which is the empty space around the objects, to create a sense of calm or tranquility, while a photographer might use perspective to create the illusion of distance or depth. Texture refers to the surface quality of an object that can be perceived through touch or implied visually. Artists can use uh, texture to create a sense of depth or to create interesting visual effects. For example, a painter might use impasto, which is thickly applied paint, to create a sense of texture or a sculptor might use different mediums or materials to create interesting tactile experiences for their viewer. Value refers to the degree of lightness or darkness of a color, often to refer to as shading or tonal value. Artists can use value to create a sense of depth or to create interesting visual effects. For example, a painter might use chir I'm gonna totally chiro scuro? Chirascuro? I don't know how to say that word to be honest. Do you think my Google will tell me? Mm. Nope. Anyways, the use of uh, light and dark contrast to create the illusion of three-dimensional space, or printmakers might use different levels of ink to create interesting patterns or texture. Color uh, refers to the hue, saturation, or brightness of a visual element created through the use of pigments, light, or digital tools. Um, artists can use color to create a wide range of emotions and effects from soothing and calming to bright and energetic. 
For example, a painter might use warm colors such as reds and oranges to create a sense of energy and passion, while cool colors such as blue and green really create a sense of tranquility and calmness. Overall, by understanding the, and manipulating these elements of art, artists can really create a powerful and compelling artwork which can communicate meaning, emotion, and beauty. So explore the elements of art with themes. So teaching the elements of art through a theme can really be a fun and engaging way to help students understand how, the ele how these elements come together and work together as a cohesive artwork. So here are some tips uh, on how to teach the elements of art through a theme. So number one is to start is to choose a theme. So start by choosing a theme that can be explored through the different art forms and techniques. For example, you might choose a theme of nature or farm or insects or underwater, and then explore how the elements of art are used in like a landscape or painting, where they create little paper sculptures of animals or do prints of flowers, for example. Number two is to introduce the elements. So before diving into the theme, introduce the elements of art to your students. So use examples and demonstrations and show how each element can be used to create different effects in art artwork. Number three is to explore the theme through different media. So encourage your students to explore the theme through different art forms, mediums, through techniques. For example, they can create a mixed media artwork that combines painting and drawing. They explore charcoal or soft pastel or a combination of oil pastel, watercolor painting, whatever you want. But it's just a great way to explore the theme um, of whatever you're working more with. If it's nature, you're exploring nature, or if it's um, space and you're exploring space, but also with the elements of art and medium. So you're taking all these things, putting them together, and that's really going to increase increase engagement and depth of learning. Next is to encourage experimentation. So you want to make sure that you really are encouraging your students to experiment with different materials, techniques, and styles. This is going to help them develop their own unique artistic voice and explore the elements of art in a more personal and meaningful way. Six is to provide feedback and critique. Provide feedback and critique with your students in a nice, calm, inclusive process, positive experience, and, and make it that way throughout the process, right? Encourage them to reflect on their own work and how the elements of art are used to communicate their ideas and emotion. But by teaching the elements of art through a theme, you can really uh, help your students develop a deeper understanding of how these elements work together to create a really meaningful and cohesive artwork. Uh, in addition, ex uh, encouraging experimentation and providing feedback will help your students to develop their artistic skills and confidence, but also explore the theme in a more personal and meaningful way. Now, if you're wanting to look for or find some art units that are already fully planned that explore a theme, plus the elements of art, you can find some great specific ones um, in the Misertastic TPT store, Teachers Pay Teachers. You can search Misertastic on Teachers Pay Teachers to find me, or if you look in the show notes below the video, you will find that. You can scroll through the show notes at the bottom and it's gonna have a link to every single one. I have made a different art unit for kindergarten, grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five, grade six, grade seven, and grade eight. Um, each one has a different theme. So starting off with animals in kindergarten, then farm in grade one, insects in grade two, in grade three we explore reptiles, in grade four it's underwater, grade five it's space, grade six, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting, <laughs> for the older kids. Grade six is weather, yeah, grade seven is time, and grade eight is light and dark in the different ways to think about that and perceive it. So conclusion, so teaching the elements of art, again, oh, by the way, those links are in the description below the video, or you can search Ms. Artastic TPT, go to the elements of art section, the link will be on the left side of my store, um, scroll down to E, it's in alphabetical order. Anyways, uh, teaching elements of art to elementary school children can be a fun and rewarding experience for both the kids and the educator by using hands-on activities, incorporating technology, and really encouraging experimentation, children can learn how to master the elements of art and create beautiful and meaningful artworks. By incorporating unique ideas such as collaborative art projects, nature, um, artist trading cards and prints, 
Educators can really keep children uh, engaged and excited about creating artworks. Now remember to always make the teaching of the elements of art fun and inspiring for your artist and you're going to have so much success in your classroom. Well my friend that's it for this episode and I will see you in the next.